This is Rishabh Jain and welcome to part 2 of our 3 part series on image processing. This tutorial is on image segmentation. If you want to know the basics on image processing, click the card in the top right corner of the screen or head down to the description below for our first video tutorial. That will cover the basics on image processing for getting started. Once you have the MATLAB environment opened up, the first thing you're going to want to do is manage your add-ons. Make sure that you have the image processing toolbox installed on your setup. You can do this by simply going here and making sure that you have the image processing toolbox added. After that, let's begin with a simple line of code. RGB equals imread color chips.png. Now what is this doing? It's looking at a variable called RGB, running imread on it to read this image, color chips.png. And this image is included with the toolbox, so no need to download anything. After that, we're simply going to show it by running imshowRGB. We can go over to the editor and run this program to make sure that everything's working. Or you can go down to the command window here and type in the name of the program to run it. After that, we're going to do d equals imdisline. Now this is where it gets interesting. What is d? Well, d is defined as image distance line. Now what is the image distance line? Once you run your program, you'll notice that this little blue line appears. We can actually drag this and move it around. And what we're going to do is measure the size of one of these chips. And the goal is to actually get it down to 20 to 20 to 25, uh, essentially uh, pixels in this, the radius of this little chip right here. And if you're in that 20 to 25 range, that means you've measured it properly and that everything's working okay. After that, you can simply delete this distance line by typing in delete D and make sure you first measure it and have it set up and then you can delete it. All right, so now that it's deleting this distance line, we can move on to the next step. And this is actually where we're going to get started with a lot of amazing image processing. So our goal here is to actually outline each of these chips. We want to draw a red line to define where each of these chips are and essentially, you know, do this little image processing and image enhancement. So the first thing we're going to do here is, you know, looking at these manually, we can actually outline these pretty easily, but having the computer do that can be a little bit difficult. So first we're going to start with an initial attempt. And essentially what we're going to do is ask whether these objects are brighter or darker than the background. And it's hard to tell just based on this as all of them are pretty easy to see. But what we can run is this little snippet right here, which um, and I have all of this code in the description below, so feel free to use that. But essentially what this little snippet does is we're defining a gray image as we're just turning in, we're just turning this RGB image to gray um, using this RGB to gray function and then doing I am show gray image. So that allows us to look at it. And what you'll notice is that, you know, a lot of these chips are pretty easy to look like, right? The background is quite bright and most of the chips are darker than the background. But if we run this little function, a function called I am find circles, uh, what you'll notice is that it looks for circular objects that are brighter than the background. However, we need to change this so that this function instead looks for chips that are darker than the background. So I'm posting this little right here. Um, it essentially takes the input parameters, the centers and the radii of these little chips, and it runs I am find circles using our image, <clears throat> this little definition we have here, 20 to 25. That's essentially defining how long the distance line was, object polarity, which tells us um, essentially that's that's a by default, so we're using the object polar polarity parameter. And then essentially, rather than looking at chips that are lighter than the background, we're looking at chips that are darker. And after this, what you'll notice is, let's just try running this and see what happens. So once it runs, uh, what we'll notice immediately is that, right, it's, it's quite difficult to see um, what happened here because 
the centers and the radii are literally empty, which means that it has not found any circles. And this happens quite frequently, because our function IM find circles is a circle detector, and it has an internal detection threshold. What a threshold is, is it essentially defines a, a, a point in between a set where if things are larger than that threshold, we automatically do one thing, and if things are less than the threshold, we do another thing. And in that case, that threshold is this intensity of the circle compared to the background. So let's increase the detection sense sensitivity so we can detect these circles more efficiently. So now we're going to run this little bit of code right here. So essentially what this little bit does is we still have our definition centers radii. We're still using the same function. I am find circles. We're using dark. But what we're doing right here is we're adding another parameter. You'll notice this dot 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 right here. And essentially what this parameter does and I can actually just go back here. Um, essentially what this does is we're allowed to define the sensitivity if we want and we want to define that as 0 0.9 and the sensitivity is from 0 to 1 and currently it is actually set to 0 0.85 so we're going to make it just a little bit more sensitive and see what happens. So let's delete this old I am fine circles and run this new one. Let's see what happens. And what we'll notice is it actually did end up finding a lot of these circles. Look at that. It found three, six, eight. It found eight of these little chips inside this image, which is honestly really great. So let's see if we can go back and do even better than that. So now we want to draw the circles on this image. It was able to, de to detect them, but can we actually visualize that and look at these circles? And in order to do that, we can run this little line here. I am show RBG. RGB, essentially what this does is it just looks at this image, this RGB version. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run a function known as visCircles. VizCircles is again short for another word, visual circles. And it allows us to visualize these circles with centers and radii at different points. And, and we can actually manually measure these centers and radii if we want. And what we'll notice is it has successfully outlined a few of these circles. We actually got uh, we actually got seven here, which is a good start. Now, can we improve further on that? Can we do even better? There, uh, you know, it outlined things pretty great. Uh, the chips that it was able to find, right? Um, there's a little bit of distortion here, but depending on your actual, um, depending on the actual like sensitivity and everything of the image, it can get a little bit uh, polarized around the corners here. But can we actually do better? Can we get more of these chips involved? So let's try increasing the sensitivity even more okay let's try making these more sensitive let's try making this threshold a little bit lower so that it's able to detect these circles a little bit better because you know when we were looking at that grayscale image the background of some of these circles was a little bit hard to see so let's increase the sensitivity um let's quickly delete our old uh visual circles around these and let's create a new one using this higher sensitivity so let's just run this program real quick and what we'll notice is it actually was able to find a few more circles which is really great and the main colors it's able to see is red blue and green and what you'll notice is those are some of the darker colors the oranges you know were harder to see and it wasn't able to detect, to detect any of the yellow chips so now let's use our second method. The second method is a two-stage method for finding the circles. So far, we've been using a method called the phase coding method, which is used for, of course, detecting the circles. But there's a one more method that is popularly called the two-stage method, and it's also available in MATLAB. MATLAB's honestly a very great tool that has a lot of these great functions. Um, and that leads us to our question of the day. If you think MATLAB is better than TensorFlow, let us know in the comments below. If you think that it's worse, then let it also let us know in the comments below, but give us some reasoning why. We'd love to hear your input and we'll definitely make a video featuring some of the comments on what you guys think. What is better, MATLAB or TensorFlow? Just let us know and we'll compile the results and it helps us out a lot. So make sure to leave a comment down below on what you think. 
Okay, so let's get back to the program here and introduce a new method. In our code here where we define sensitivity, you'll notice that there's even more parameters. There's a value and options parameter right here. So uh, MATLAB's actually really great in this. It auto suggests and allows us to complete this. So using a method, there's two main methods here, phase code, which was the default one we were using, or two stage. So let's try using two stage. Now let's again run this. So let's delete our old, um, uh, let's delete our old outlines and create some new ones. And what we'll notice is we got even more. This time we were actually able to pick up all of the green circles, all of the blue circles, all of the red circles, and all of the orange chips. Um, so these are essentially chips or circles, I'm, I'm using the terms lightly here. And the thing we'll notice is that all four yellow ones we're still not able to get. And that's actually okay, because we have another way to tackle that. So let's look into a little bit, uh, let's look into something interesting here. See if we go into our command window and type in I am show under a gray underscore image, right? It's going to open up this grayscale image. And what you'll notice is that actually this half of the desk here looks a little bit darker than this right half. And, you know, if we look at these chips right here, that's actually pretty interesting because it's, you know, you can't even tell this that this border exists. Whereas for a lot of these images, it's very, very easy to tell where the border is. So our hypothesis here would simply be that, you know, this chip is going to get outlined pretty simply. This one might be a little bit harder to find. So let's go back to our original RGB image. So um, we can take a look and define what we need to do. So what we need to do is we actually just have to make the sensitivity even higher. You know, this problem here that we're trying to do, we're trying to outline all these chips, it's a, not an easy problem, but it's also not too difficult. So um, what we notice is that just by increasing the sensitivity, we can make things run a lot better. So let's try running that. And what we'll notice is that it was able to really get almost all the circles again. It improved on this previous orange outline, but it still wasn't able to get some of these yellow chips in. So it did great, but why are some of the yellow chips not getting in? Also, why is it doing this weird thing with this stylus pen right here? Why is it going over that? And that's, that's some of the thing that we need to figure out. So let's engineer this and find a solution for this problem. So let's go back to that grayscale image once again and try to figure out what went wrong, right? If we open up this grayscale image, we'll see that the yellow chips are, you know, again, almost the same intensity as the background. So what we need to do in order to detect the yellow chips is to rather than using this term dark, let's try using bright. You know, let's try only searching for these yellow circles. It might not be able to get these darker ones, but it'll definitely be able to get the yellow ones. And then we can combine these two results to make things even better. So let's try running this program once again. And what you'll notice is this time we got all the yellow circles all of the orange circles, or one orange circle and one green circle, which was pretty expected. That's that's really amazing. So what we're going to do here is use something uh, pretty cool. We're going to make a slight modification in the program, and we're going to introduce something called H bright. H bright is just a variable we have here where we're going to draw circles around the centers that are bright and around the radii that are bright. And instead of using a red color like default, we're going to draw a blue circle around those ones. So let's keep this earlier, let's keep this old line of code right here, um, essentially where we're going to, uh, let's try running this. And what we'll see is that this time, oh, it looks like there's a, there's a quick error here about centers bright. Yes, yeah, so the point here is we're just going to change this old uh, little line right here. So instead of outlining those normal centers and radii, we're going to only uh, look for these bright ones. So if we run this again, we'll see that we outlined all the bright ones in blue. And we can actually run this as well on some of the dark ones, right? So if we change this and we rename this to centers and bright, and we change this to the dark ones, right? Let's see what happens we'll see that it was able to get all of these red ones and it was able to get all of these blue ones.
Next, we're going to be finding vegetation in multispectral images using array arithmetic to process images with three planes and plot image data. On the left here, we have video number one for part one, and on the right is part three to end this tutorial. So go ahead and click on the next video to get started. I'll see you there.